Welcome back everybody to another Motobob video and I've just got back from the international press launch of the brand new Honda XL750 Transal. And this is a bike that I've been massively looking forward to riding ever since it was unveiled at EICMA last year. You see it shares a platform with the new Hornet CB750, so the engine, a lot of the chassis, the electronics. And that's the bike I actually rode on the press launch at the end of last year and I was massively impressed, especially considering the price point of 6999 pounds at launch and it looks like Honda might have done it again because the launch price for the Transalp is 9499 so significantly less than the competition and it looks like on paper it should be a bit of a bargain so did it live up to expectations or did it fall a bit flat on the road well in this video I'll tell you everything that I learned from the press launch and at the end I'll answer the question is this the middleweight adventure bike to buy in 2023 <laughs> So clearly you've got some pretty significant adaptations required to make this bike fit for purpose for adventure riding and adventure touring. And we'll start with the frame. So it's been beefed up a little to withstand those heavier impacts that you're more likely to uh, encounter when you're riding off-road. But also they've made the subframe longer and wider, a lot more substantial. And that's for both carrying a passenger and luggage and giving you a bit more space and comfort for doing bigger miles in the saddle. Yeah, at the same time as adding this extra strength and size to the frame, it's still pretty lightweight. I mean, they were keen to tell us in the press briefing last night that it's 10% lighter than the frame that they use on the CB500X, which is, of course, a substantially smaller bike than this. Now, that's one of the contributing factors to a pretty impressive wet weight or curb weight. It's 208 kilograms, and that makes it look pretty favorable when you look at some of the competition. I mean, the Tenere 700 is pretty much the benchmark in this category, and the Transalp comes in pretty close. It's not far off at all. And also, you've got the Suzuki V-Strom 800DE, which was launched at a similar time to this at EICMA last year, that bike's quite a bit more weighty than the Transalp. So definitely one of the key strengths of this bike. And you can feel that smallness and agility when you're out on the road and on the trails. Now look, we didn't do a massive amount of off-roading on this trip, just a fairly easy stretch of gravel. But I think that's exactly where Honda are positioning it. This is primarily a bike for road riding and touring, but it does sit fairly tall with a decent amount of travel and ground clearance and you do get the 21 inch spoke front wheel and the 18 rear so that gives you better rolling off-road and also the option to fit some decent off-road rubber. The standing position is serviceable too, there's off-road foot pegs in the accessories catalog and also you've got some protection options like the crash bars and the bash plate. But look, despite all that stuff and all that hardware, this isn't a proper hardcore off-roader. It's not as off-road biased as something like a Tenere or the Touareg 660 and where the Transalp really does shine is on the road. Handling is light and engaging and you don't really notice a great deal of vagueness even with that oversized front rim. The brakes are presumably by design quite gentle on the bike so that they're more friendly off-road but actually there's easily enough power and progression even when you're barreling into tight turns and I personally really like the suspension setup despite the fact that it's only preload adjustable on both the fork and shock I still found that it was a nice balance of comfortable yet support supportive. But I think it's that relatively low weight that really stands out to me and contributes to it feeling light on its feet. And of course, it also contributes to a decent power to weight ratio, which they pointed out to us in the press briefing is better than most of their similar offerings, only matched by the base Africa twin. And when we talk about this impressive power to weight ratio, yes, it's pretty light and that's one part of it, but also it makes pretty decent power figures as well. So it's the same engine effectively as the Horner, a 755 cc parallel twin with a 270 degree crank and while they have made a few adaptations for this specific bike so things like the air intake ducts are a little longer and they say that gives it more torquiness in the low to mid range and a bit of that pulsing feel that you get with the Africa twin you know those headline peak torque and peak power figures are pretty much exactly the same as the Hornet they might be like half a horsepower out now for me I think that's definitely a good thing what makes this bike fun to ride is the fact that yes it's got that low to mid range that you'd expect from a 750 parallel twin 
but it just revs out a little bit more than the competition. When you get up to like six or 7,000 RPM, you've still got two or three K of RPM to go and you can let it just rev that little bit further. And you've got pretty much like 20 horsepower more on top versus something like the Tenere 700. So on the road where you've got the opportunity to explore the upper rev range, this bike is a lot of fun and it gives you a little bit of that excitement from the Hornet, but of course, in a much more comfortable and touring friendly form factor. And that's the thing, this bike is intended for doing distance work and two up work. And while that extra 20 horsepower might sound like it's gonna be the most valuable when you're on twisties and stuff like that, Actually, in that touring scenario where you've got a lot of mass on the bike, personally, I think you'll be glad of it. If you're on the motorway or something like that and you wanna drop down a gear and overtake, 90 horsepower is gonna feel a lot more capable than something like 70. Now, on top of those top line performance figures, it's generally a well-appointed power unit with all the key features you'd hope for. So you've got a slip assist clutch. There's the option of an accessory up and down quick shifter, which works really nicely. And you've got a decent fuel capacity, so 16.9 litres which ought to be good enough for a couple of hours in the saddle at a time as long as you're going relatively steady and I'd even say it sounds pretty good too they've gone for the same approach as the Hornet where you've got one exit that's uh, a little larger in diameter and that lets out the more pulsing bassy frequencies at low revs but you've also got a secondary smaller exit that has more of a raspy bark especially when you start to apply the throttle So there is a decent soundtrack as well as the induction sound when you're darting between corners, but the fun stuff is just one side of what this bike does well. And I fully expect a lot of customers to be eyeing one up for more practical duties like commuting and moderate touring. Comfort wise, it's pretty good. I mean, it's not as substantial as something like uh, Africa Twin where the tank really does flare out and give you that wind protection and it feels a lot more like a cocoon. But I'd say for a bike of this stature, you know, wind protection is pretty decent especially with these accessory hand guards and while it does sort of cut the wind about here I didn't notice any annoying buffeting which I think for me is preferable I'd rather have a screen that's just below my sort of chin line and leaves me with a bit of clean air on the helmet as opposed to something that's particularly high but gives you that real bobbling around feeling as for the bar position well it feels perfectly natural to me and nice and comfortable a little bit more biased perhaps towards uh, road riding but I'm sure you could tinker with the setup and get something that's a bit more comfortable for standing. And then in terms of the seat height, it's 850 mils. So that is ever so slightly, I'd say, on the tall side if you are doing majority road riding. But I think it's also easy enough to get on with and I can get both feet just about down and I'm about 5'9". And if you get your bum over to one side just to get the one foot down, you can really plant it. So I think it's probably the right balance for a bike of this style. Also got to say, with that bigger subframe, there is plenty of space for the passenger. Panny is a well-designed with these cutouts to make sure there's room for the passenger's leg. And I also always like to see a really substantial grab rail. It's a lot more reassuring when you're on the back of a bike, when you've really got something like that, that's proper firm and bulky to hang on to. Now, another key strength of this 750 platform from Honda is just how much functionality they've been able to pack into a bike at such an impressive price point. Between the Hornet launch, the Transalp launch, and we've got a Hornet in the studio as well at the moment, I've had plenty of time to get to grips with it. And whilst it might not be the most emotive design. It is functional and easy to use. I particularly like that they've given it four layouts for the dash so you can choose something that you find easy to read at a glance. And then also you've got three different background options. So again, you can find something to your taste. Personally, I find that the black looks best, for example, apart from when you're on a particularly bright and sunny day where it does help to flip back to the white background. Riding modes are excellent too. I mean, you get five to choose from, which is a real contrast to something like the Tenere 700 which just gets ABS essentially. Whether that's a good or bad thing is really a question of personal taste but here you've got sport, road, rain, gravel and user. I'm sure you can imagine what sport, road and rain feel like but gravel it sort of allows a little bit more slip but there is still some TC. You've still got ABS on the front and they've also dialed down the power delivery so it's more of like a, a safe off-road mode but fortunately you've got the user setting where you can switch all that stuff off, bring the power levels back up and also get the engine braking dialed into your taste. So even if you're quite an advanced off-road rider, there's plenty of customization available and you should be able to find a combination that works for your riding style. Then you've got the Bluetooth connectivity, you've got self-canceling indicators, the emergency brake light feature, 
LED lighting all round, and there's not much really that you'd need that's missing. The only thing I will say, and this is true of the Suzuki, the Yamaha, this bike, is that you can't get cruise control, not as standard and not as an accessory, which I think is a bit of a shame for a bike that does look pretty well set up for touring. Perhaps the thinking is not to get it too close to the Africa Twin in terms of like capabilities. And I do appreciate that they've priced this super aggressive. So, you know, you have to draw the line somewhere in terms of what features you include, but I would have liked to have seen it for that reason as an accessory so you've got the option to spec it out if you want. Perhaps one of its weaknesses though, and this is a question of personal taste, but it might be the looks. I mean, the headlight looks to be pretty much straight off the CB500X, and I do think they could have been a little bit more bold with some of the other color choices. This sort of tri-color version looks really good to me, especially with the gold rims, but then to have a black option and a dark gray option feels like a little bit of a missed opportunity to do something a touch more jazzy, like a red, which is pretty common for Honda bikes. I will say though, and I have seen this bike in the flesh a few times at Eichma last year and at Motorcycle Live. I think seeing it in situ and with a bit of dirt on it and also with some of the accessories like the hand guards, the crash bars, the panniers, you know, it does look a bit more purposeful. And actually when you put it side to side with an Africa Twin, which some of the ride leaders have been using today, you know, it doesn't look like unsatisfyingly small or, you know, soft. It looks, you know, quite purposeful out on a trail. Certainly for me, it would have to be this color, but I'd love to know what you think of the looks down in the comments. But ultimately, the question is whether this is an adventure bike that you should go out and buy in 2023. I mean, firstly, it certainly plugs a gap in Honda's range. So if you're looking for something that's like a smaller, more manageable alternative to an Africa Twin, then it definitely does that. But also it's a great step up from the CB500X. It feels a little more substantial. It's obviously quite a bit quicker. And so yeah, it's a nice balance and basically feels like a, a marriage of those two. As for how it compares to the other options outside of Honda. Well, I've already said this, but if you're looking for a hardcore off-roader, then something like the Tenere or maybe the KTM 890 Adventure is gonna do that job a little better. But I think Honda know that. This is meant to be a versatile tool that can do a bit of everything. It's excellent on the road, genuinely a lot of fun, and I can also see it being a solid mile muncher and utilitarian bike, especially with the right accessories. And then it also does the gravel stuff, you know, pretty damn well as one of its abilities as an all-rounder. Then you've got to consider the exceptional price at launch. And so I can confidently recommend this one as definitely a bike to shortlist and want to get out and demo ride to see if it's right for you. As always though, I'd love to know what you think of it. So do let me know down in the comments below. If you're more of a naked person though, then I'll link to my review of the Hornet from the press launch last year. Definitely check it out, a great bike as well. And if you're new here and you wanna see more reviews like this, then please do hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.